welcome to another Pleasure Beach Experience video where I've been joined by a special guest, Stuz. Hello. Nice, nice to see you. Thank you. And we've got Mike as well, um, nice and bright in his orange. And uh, I've got usual. my uh, PBE gear on, unfortunately, Stuz forgot his, it's still in the wash. Yeah. But we're going to be talking about how we became roller coaster enthusiasts, how we got involved with the coaster community, our first roller coaster credits, but also. We're going to be joined by many, many, many theme park YouTubers and content creators who have helped us out with this video. So a big thanks to everyone who has got involved and helped us out with this little project to keep us all occupied during times of pretty much self-isolation or PBE isolation yeah. as we are in right now. Right. We are in the first right. weekend of no parks yes. and we're all going round the bend. Pretty <laughs> much, <laughs> but it is, it is going to be worth it because it means that hopefully by the time we get to the summer we'll be able to do what we enjoy the most which is going to parks and hopefully everyone will still be feeling good by that point and everyone that's watching will feel good and safe and everything. But before we get involved in looking at our, how we got involved, why we liked theme parks in the first place and stuff like that. I'm going to put you both on the spot now and I'm going to start with Mike. Have you got any sort of outstanding theme park memories whilst you've been part of the theme park community? Yeah, I've got quite a few. Um, one of the probably the earliest ones is the Pleasure Beach Guide ART on the big one back in 2008. Yeah, June which 2008. Which was like one of the biggest sort of early get-togethers and events yeah. we had, so yeah. I had as a... We thought that would be a one-off, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we'd been looking, well, me and you particularly, been looking yes. at sorting something like that for a while with a couple of other people who were part of the guide, yeah. and eventually we managed to work it out for June 2008, and it was really, it was like dress rehearsal for Club Pleasure Beach yeah. that we would eventually do four years later, and it was, it was nice to do it, and I remember at the time thinking this would probably be the only time that we ever get to do this now. What? Twelve well, years later, yeah, yeah, we've yeah, done quite yeah. a lot of it. But it's, what? Six years of seven years of running events. Eight since years. Eight years. Yeah, eight years now. Getting on to, aren't we? But um, so we can let Stuz get a word in. Have you got any outstanding memories that come to mind as well? <coughs> well, since been in uh, the community since twenty or six. Well, the first meet I did Nash Bash with the uh, Pleasure Beach Guide. Um, I was uh, I joined the guide a couple of months before, and then I went to the first ever meet up with them, and we had a great day. We did. And, uh, it started. It started from there. We uh, did. I remember we did the uh, pleasure week for the day, and then the weekend after, Scott invited me over to Pleasureland uh, Southport. Yeah. That was uh, sadly my last ever visit to uh, the old Pleasureland Southport. When you put it like that, that's so, that's crazy to yeah, think about. Was. Yeah. Well, it's 20 or 6, yeah. And yeah, who knew yeah. back then that we'd be riding traumatiser more often? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah well, at that yeah, point, it didn't seem right. like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd forgotten we'd done Pleasure Land the week after, that's you know? right, yeah, we did, yeah. Me, you, and Dave, and your mates. Yeah, it was, yeah. was Tom, one Tom, of my old school Tom, friends. Yeah, yeah. Have you got any more memories that stand out for you? Yeah, first time we all went to uh, Port Ventura. <laughs> yeah. As a group, that was a, a really good trip. Um, it was an 11? Yeah, 11. It was yeah. Shambhala was just being grounded at the time. Yes, it was. So Dragon Car looked huge at the time. Yeah. And it's Dragon Car looked massive. Yeah, it's it was. weird when you look at pictures now. It's like looking at the South Pleasure Beach without the big one. Yeah, it is. Weird. It's very, very weird. Yeah. Another one for me, um, in subject to Port Aventura, would have to be the Stag Do. Yeah. Oh, My yeah. Stag Do in 2017. We had the log flume incident oh, where God, we yeah. pretty much one of many. Yeah, where we flooded ourselves on the Port Aventura log flume. The POV still on it. Yeah, it is. We put a card in the yeah. top of the screen. We got the, the rapids. We had Mike falling off the urinal in the toilets. We oh, had Mike yeah. going on stage in the saloon. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, that's right. And, uh, yes, yeah. Mike falling asleep outside the saloon. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, we looked after you really. We did honestly. We didn't suggest that you should go up on stage no. or anything like no. that. We didn't mention it there to was any only of the about actors. 15 people in there and we were 12 of them so yeah it was quite an interesting it was really one empty, wasn't it? yeah because you think about it we're in a spanish theme park and the only people watching the show in the far west saloon were portuguese english and american yeah. and the portuguese agreed to have the show in english because they went well yeah we're outnumbered so yeah. we'll just do it in english we all speak english and, yeah. and that's how you ended up on stage yeah. pretty much because then they started doing all the jokes in english instead yeah. and there was a running joke about manchester Ray! Yeah, yeah and it just went on for the whole show, didn't it? But does any more that come to mind? Well, um, just 
all the other countries that uh, I've visited, I would have probably like places like Sweden. I've, I would have never have gone there if it hadn't been for the being in the coastal community, visiting uh, Lisbon for my first time last year. That was great. That um, also, yeah. I mean, I've always wanted to go to America, and uh, I finally got to go last year. Um, but that's again, that's probably I wouldn't wouldn't have got there if it hadn't been for the coastal community. So I've got Scott to thanks for that. I remember um, like going back to 2006 yeah. and every time we used to speak about Cedar Point you always used to say if I win the lottery we're all going to Cedar <laughs> yes, Point. I, I remember when you I always did. used to say that and then last year for I think it was your 50th we made it. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. For 60th. your 60th we decided to actually take yeah. you to Cedar Point yeah, yeah. and it was good because Mark came with us as well. We had quite a big group of people, including yes. both of you, who had yeah. never been to yeah. Cedar Point, never been to no. America, no. and it was a big <laughs> thing for all of us. Mike got taken off into the custody yeah. suite. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I knew we got yeah. No, it wasn't as bad as it, as it sounds, but... Yeah, no, it was just uh, but like, Mike when, messing up with his tickets. When I, um, when I think back to when I first became an enthusiast, I used to sit on our CDB, yeah. and you'd look at these coasters and think, I'd love to go there one day never ever thought one day go on top of the dragster yeah then, to I, actually go there was and not just go on it run oh, and then go, go on don't. it <laughs> yeah. we yeah. had to get in gas and air before he went on but we, <laughs> yeah. we were stood by magnum and for the first time in about seven hours that day top field drags to test it and we were just like go for it let's go and we were with taylor from coaster studios as well we were just like leg it let's go yeah. um, but yeah, shall we start hearing from everyone else? Yeah. See how everyone else got involved with the roller coaster community and how they got into coasters. How did you start to become interested in theme parks? For example, was it through visiting them with family or friends, playing on roller coaster tycoon, or any other way? I think as a kid, I was always interested in theme parks, but I just didn't know it. I'd always been going to theme parks with my family. You know, we'd always go to places like Alton Towers, uh, Drayton Manor. We had season passes to Drayton Manor, so we'd go literally every week. Um, but it took me a while to realise that I was interested. You know, I started to have a look on forums and to really kind of keep up with things that Alton Towers were doing specifically. I remember I was really interested in 13 and the development of 13, um, but hadn't quite realised that there were all these other nerds also really interested who had like the plans for the ride and they never knew what, what was going on. I, I had no idea what was going on. Um, but then three years later, when the Smiler was being built, I'd realised, you know, I was on Towers Times on the forums and through that I was able to watch the construction of the Smiler pretty much from start to finish. I'd go on the forum every day, check the progress, you know, check to see that uh, there'd been a new element built or there was something secret that we didn't know about that we were seeing for the first time. Um, and that was really exciting and that really kind of really engaged me with the whole theme park community at that point. Um, but pretty much right after the Smiler was finished construction, I kind of phased out of roller coasters for a bit. I, I continued to go to theme parks, but I wasn't on the forums. I wasn't really keeping up with theme parks and, and amusement parks and roller coasters in general at that point. I've been into them really as, as far back as I can remember. Um, used to go Camelot when I was really young and got into it from there. Started going out on Towers, Pleasure Beach. Well, I've enjoyed theme parks uh, all through my life, really. Uh, from when I was very young, visiting Blackpool with my uh, family and, say, Port Pleasureland, Markham at Frontierland, Camelot as well. Um, I used to go maybe once, twice a year. Um, yeah, so um, it's only about the last 12 years I've started going fairly uh, frequently, really, like uh, several times a year. To the leaves, really, yeah. Hi everyone, it's Jordan here from Cupcakes and Coasters. Uh, thanks to Scott for asking me to uh, tell my story of how I became a, a theme park enthusiast, I guess. Um, it's always weird for me to talk about because I've kind of always been this way. Like, I don't feel like there was like a defining moment in my life where I was like, I am a theme park enthusiast now. It's kind of just been how I've been brought up. Um, anyone who follows me on social media knows that my parents are um, big into theme parks. So whenever they go on holiday or travel to countries around the world, they will always um, pop into whatever the local park is. And they uh, have been to quite a lot of parks that I haven't been to myself. Um, 
most recently they went to Warner Brothers in um, in Abu Dhabi, which I'm super jealous of. Um, but yeah, so because because of them and because they like theme parks, we kind of always grew up going to them. Um, we first went to, on a Florida holiday and did the whole Orlando Disney World thing um, in 1994. And we visited every few years after that, always going back because we loved it so much. Um, but then in between them at home, we'd always go to Adventure Island or Peter Pan's Playground as it was known uh, back in the day. Any kid grew up um, who grew up in Essex uh, is well aware of Peter Pan's Playground. We all went there. Um, Thorpe Park and Chesington and Alton Towers and even like Drayton Manor and uh, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Southport, Frontierland, all of those places. We, we kind of, we went all over and always visiting parks. Um, and then we also kind of visited like Port Ventura and stuff as well. So it's always been something that I've done and been interested in. Like theme parks have always been on my radar. It's never a question of if we would go. It's always a question of when's the next park, where's the next park we're going to. Um, so it's always kind of been in my nature to always be planning trips to theme parks, I guess. Well, it started with family, really. Um, going to like sort of Chessington and things like that and riding the coasters there and got do all, all them sort of stuff then it started wrapping up with the birth of ICT back in 99 getting that for the PC and that's pretty how it pretty much how it happened I first became interested in theme parks when I was uh, probably around six or seven years old when I went to I grew up near Chesington World of Adventures and that was a park that really gave me the bug going on things like the fifth dimension Professor Burp's Bubble Works um, you know, the yellow train, seeing all that, was the yellow train, I called it the, the, the yellow train, it was a Safari Skyway. Um, kind of growing up there, uh, Thought Park as well, the Flying Fish, the Octopus Gardens, the uh, Phantom Fantasia, which then became the Wicked Witch's Haunts, they were all sort of big influences. I remember, when I was growing up, mid 80s, I wanna say, to like, late 80s, Mum and Dad always used to get me to Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Always just go down the illuminations and that's just literally just growing up. That's all I can ever remember is seeing these bright lights of Blackpool. And we'd go like, because obviously from Wigan it's only down the way, be like, just be on this trip to Blackpool and always I'd want to go in and like, I'd just literally see and that's all I can, it's literally like just a, just a trip away and I could just just love going round and soaking in the atmosphere. It was a little child and like might not want to go on some of the rides but I'd be all, all like yes I just love the atmosphere and that drew me in to to want to learn more about the rides and, and go on them and, and just have fun and enjoyment with it. My interest came from going to Blackpool Pleasure Beach with my family um, at least every year. Uh, my dad was quite big on it, my grandparents on his side were quite big on it so they'd always gone. Um, my grandma's got some good memories of Pleasure Beach in the olden days. Uh, so yeah just going with my dad, he was quite encouraging to get on all the rides so it went from there really. From a young age I was taken to Blackpool Pleasure Beach with my mum and dad. We always used to take a ride on the Pleasure Beach Express when it used to go the old way round. The first memory I have of Blackpool Pleasure Beach is going underneath the big one on one of its first ever operational days in 1994. And I just remember going right underneath where it goes into the tunnel and just seeing this big silver train going on this shiny red track into the tunnel and thinking what is that? And I remember saying to my mum at the time, what is that ride? Who would know all these years later that it would be the ride I'm most obsessed about? But it was just, it was of interest from me, for me from that point onwards. But going to Blackpool all the time, you just had a special buzz. There was a late night openings. They were all the time. The Pleasure Beach was shoulder to shoulder. You just felt happy, you felt at home. You just felt like you were in a happy place. You didn't know when it was going to close, you just knew you were there until the end. It could have been a 7 o'clock close, it could have been a 2 a.m. close, that was part of the fun. And as I got older, I started to enjoy doing a bit more of the rides. Mainly started with like the big log flume, the Beaver Creek log flume, the helicopter ride, I think it is, or the plane ride that was in Beaver Creek. I had really early memories of going to Alton Towers in, I think it was 94, 
so the year Nemesis opened and just remember being absolutely fascinated by it. I didn't ride it in 94, I don't think I rode it until 98 because I rode Nemesis and Oblivion in the year that Oblivion opened um, when I was I was 11, I would have turned 12 that year but it was um, it was probably around Easter so not long after Oblivion had actually opened that I first went on it but yeah I just, I just remember just walking into Alton Towers absolutely fascinated with the place walking um, walking into Forbidden Valley and just seeing Nemesis this sprawling like massive track buried into the ground and just I've been, I've been hooked ever since really they sort of uh, always loved my theme parks of course in the same time 94 as uh, I saw Nemesis for the first time I always remember seeing the big one being built at the Pleasure Beach as well uh, it was all Growing up in the northwest of England, seeing that on the news, it was on the local news regularly that the world's tallest roller coaster was being built right down the road in Blackpool. Fantastic, and who couldn't get <laughs> interested in theme parks when uh, there's all such exciting things going on? My interest in theme parks probably started properly when I went on a school trip to Chessington World of Adventures and got to go in the Bubble Works. Um, and also ride Vampire, I think. I don't actually remember riding Vampire that day, but I'm pretty sure um, it must have happened. Um, and also, the Bullfrog Game theme park came out, I think, around this time. Um, and that was something I was pretty into. I had an Amiga, um, an Amiga 500 Plus, and would play theme park um, quite a lot. What did get me back into roller coasters was actually starting Coasterbot. Uh, and as soon as I started Coasterbot, I didn't stop. Um, so from the moment, from the get-go, I kind of it made me have to keep up with what was going on in the industry and and what our local theme parks were doing here in the UK. And then things just kind of spiraled. You know, I went started to go to more opening days, opening days of Alton Towers, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, stuff like that. Um, and we started to create our own Discord server and started to hear the thoughts of more of the people who are interested in roller coasters as well. And from coast to bottom, I really got a sense of the theme park community as a whole really started to connect with different and other people from the community. My first big coaster credit was the Grand National. And I still remember now, as I left the station, I was with one of my school friends at the time, Dane if he's watching, and we went out of the station, pulled around the corner in the old green train with like the yellow spots on it and Mr. Funshine on the front. And I remember as we went around the corner, my dad was like, hold on to the grab rail. And I was like, why it doesn't look that scary and I remember going down the first double drop and just my arse lifted so far off the seat I was just like okay I'm holding on now and from there I was hooked but having done that as well I started playing on Roller Coaster Tycoon more and more and more with a Blackpool Pleasure Beach scenario and it just made me really want to learn more about Blackpool Pleasure Beach it made me want to learn how roller coasters were built how Pleasure Beach operated I learned about Paper Ride how they made their money and it was thanks to Roller Coaster Tycoon and my parents that I got so interested in Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I think when I was around 11 or 12 was when I started playing Roller Coaster Tycoon, um, which, I mean, as many children who grew up in the 90s and noughties did, it was obviously a huge game, um, and I was really into it. I was into a lot of those games, like the design games like The Sims and Zoo Tycoon, and obviously Roller Coaster Tycoon came as part of that. Um, and I was really into it. I used to spend ages. I had a sketchbook. I was, was really into drawing as a kid. I used to have a sketchbook and I'd draw out my ideas um, of what I wanted to build on the sketchbook and then I'd use the picture that I'd drawn to create the attraction in the game. Um, I really wish I'd kept some of them now because I'd love to I'd love to go back and play those scenarios that I've built um, from my imagination. I always remember like one of my earliest memories is it's going on the Grand National with my dad and It'll always hold a special place in my heart, that ride, because it was just, it was just, I just loved it. Loved being on there with my dad, I loved like the airtime. I think that's probably where my love of airtime comes from, but I always remember like my dad, like he hated roller coasters, he hated everything, everything about it. And he, he, I'd literally just drag him on and he'd have to sit there and he used to hate it because he couldn't hold on because he's all like little five or six year old me <laughs> in the seat. So it'd be like, so he was that terrified that I'd fly out, but I was like, yeah, loving it. I could always remember coming over like the last little bit where obviously you get where it goes under the walkway and that, and 
I can literally, I can literally just see my mum there picturing her like, I can just imagine like my dad like trying to hold me in seat like that and I'd be like, mum, mum, mum. <laughs> and, and that's where literally where my love of, of rides came from. And ever, from then on, he just, he just went to like RCT. I, I, I can still remember playing Bumbley Beach as it, as it was back in the day and Forest Frontiers. And I just think, I just, not quite as bad as it was, but I literally just plop rides in everywhere and then put and put like shops and and stuff like that. And it was just I just wanted to be involved in in the whole in the whole aspect of of going to theme parks and that. First big cred that I can remember is probably the Big Dipper. Um, I really really didn't want to go on it as well. I remember getting to the top of the turnaround just going. No, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. But I believe it was a fiver my dad offered me to go on it, so I did it and it was great. So when I was young, I used to be petrified of coasters and rides. I was never um I was never really a massive fan. None of my family were really into roller coasters and rides. Uh, it's a bit of a strange one how I even got into it, I suppose. The first big cred, um Big coaster I went on really was Shockwave at Drayton Manor, Intamin stand up coaster, classic 1994. Um, a bit rough on the go, Nads, but uh, overall it's a decent first coaster, you know what I mean? Um, after a lot of persuading, I managed to get on that. I was terrified, yeah, I was really scared. Come off and then just kept doing it and doing it, and then it just got easier and easier. Um, so that was like the first, my first introduction to roller coasters. Yeah, my first big roller coaster credit was the probably Corkscrew at Towers in about 1990. Um, but that's the very first time I went um, to the park, to Elm Towers. I've been going Pleasure Beach since I was, well, virtually born really. But I only went to started going to Towers about 1990, and the uh, Corkscrew was the first big ride I've, I did there. So my first major credit was probably the Corkscrew at Alton Towers, uh, mid 90s. My first big roller coaster cred was the Vampire at Chessington, as it was for so many people. Um, it was absolutely terrifying. The indoor queue was horrendous, but brilliant. Uh, the Vampire now back to its former glory. Um, was unlike anything I'd ever seen and uh, just you know that feeling you still get flying over the Transylvanian rooftops. First big roller coaster cred that I went on was the Tower of Terror at Camelot so proper good Schwarzkopf flooper and I was fortunate enough uh, on a recent trip to Florida we had to Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay and Road Scorpion which is exactly the same layout same type of coaster a Tower of Terror, so it was a really good trip down memory lane for me, and great bringing back those memories of being the first big coaster that uh, that I actually plucked up the courage to go on. I think um, I'd been on smaller coasters before, uh, of course the Dragon Flyer, one of the world's only diesel powered coasters, also at Camelot theme park along with the Tower of Terror. But uh, yeah, it was um, it was just what once I'd been on that. I just wanted to go on everything. Of course, you had that fear of all the rides. So I remember like the first time I went on Oblivion, just thinking, what on earth is this? And the first one, the first time on the big one, of course, going up that massive lift hill and thinking, what, this is this is really high, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, Tower of Terror and then took it on from there, really. Um, my brother was nine years older than me and he got to go to Alton Towers and ride the corkscrew and the rapids and I remember, remember being um, insanely jealous as a kid. Um, he just managed to go with some friends, my parents didn't have much money um, to take us to theme parks and that sort of thing. But as soon as my brother had gone to Orton Towers it was like, that's something I have to do, I have to get to Orton Towers one day. Um, and eventually kind of yeah, got my chance to go um, with some friends as well. And I think yeah, Nemesis was definitely the first really big roller coaster I went on. Um, and I remember going on it quite late in the day, or all the school trips. At well, that time, I wasn't on a school trip, we'd just gone. Um, and the school trips had left the, left the day. And I remember just going round and round the queue line. Um, and we just kept getting on Nemesis, back on Nemesis, back on Nemesis, back on Nemesis. Unbelievable. 
Um, and these, these theme parks, the big US theme parks are always in my head. Bush Gardens was somewhere I was wanting to go. Disneyland was always something, somewhere I wanted to go. Um, I only actually got there, got to go there for the first time last year. So there was a big break for me in terms of going to theme parks as a kid, um, which was very few and far between. Um, my mum actually bought me a video camera around the time I went to Alton Towers for the first time. And I remember telling her that one day I was going to make a documentary about Alton Towers. Something that I did eventually, although be it a very fanboy, rough around the edges one. Um, so there was a big break for me from childhood. I went off to university, um, started focusing on my career, various other bits and pieces. Um, and the theme park thing, although I think we went to a theme park on my honeymoon when I got married. Um, didn't actually get to go to that many parks, but it was always something that was in the back of my head. Um, and then a few years ago, when I had a little bit of time on my hands, I decided to try and make my fanboy documentary about Alton Towers. Um, and in doing that, stumbled across a massive community of theme park fans and roller coaster enthusiasts, and with YouTube channels and blogs um, and web pages and Twitter accounts. Um, and it's actually been an amazing thing. Um, and I've made some real friends out of it, learned a little bit more about some of the theme parks. Um, and look forward to them being open again, hopefully at some point in 2020. I became connected with the roller coaster enthusiast community by actually searching for information about the Grand National Fire in May 2004. And that brought me to Coaster Force, which at the time was being run by Dan. And I found all the Blackpool Pleasure Beach videos on there with the Iron Maiden music. If you're, if you're an original member of Coaster Force, you will remember those videos. At the time, they were iconic Blackpool videos in the roller coaster enthusiast community. And then I found the forum, signed up to the forum, found out about Top Thrill Dragster, found out about Magnum, and then it was like, I want to learn more about roller coasters because before I joined the forum, I still thought the big one was the biggest roller coaster in the world. And that was 10 years after it opened, but that was how much I learned in such a short space of time having joined Coaster Force. I learned so much about coasters and then the following year I went to the first meetup in 2005. Following on from that I was invited to join the Pleasure Beach Guide, got made a moderator quite quickly, suggested we started to do meetups which we started to do in 2006 and for me really the rest is history from there. I met a lot of friends for life from that point onwards, ended up creating Pleasure Beach Experience three years later. And yeah, it's just been a big, big part of my life ever since. I don't think there's ever a month now, other than the closed season, where I don't go on a roller coaster. And to be honest, even in the closed season, I still go on lots of roller coasters thanks to the fairs going abroad. So yeah, it's a big thanks to Coaster Force that I got connected to the roller coaster enthusiast community. I became an enthusiast back when 2010 I think when 13 was built I remember like watching the construction of that every single day via uh, you know forums and set up an account and then that was when I really realized that I was chatting with other like-minded people and I was like yeah I think you're a geek now officially so yeah that was me really that was that was my journey then obviously the YouTube and things started a year and a half ago two years ago and yeah I've been a geek ever since the reason that I'm still interested in roller coasters now is because of the community rather than my own interest. It was the community that got me interested in the Smiler, I just didn't really know it. But then as I kind of left the community I phased out of roller coasters completely. But listening to the opinions of other people and you know listening to what they think about rides and stuff like that is, keeps me interested um, and then just creating videos about roller coasters as well keeps me interested. Uh, so. That is pretty much how I became an enthusiast, was um, creating my own channel really kind of forced me to. Uh, and things that inspired me to create CoasterBot was other people's theme park content. Um, I've been watching lots of other people's stuff in the years uh, leading up to it. And I'd always been a big fan of kind of like making videos and you know, I always loved editing videos and recording videos. So it made sense to me to create theme park videos, you know, why not combine two things together um, and then it kind of all just took off from there. It, when, it, when a coaster is being built now, there's thousands of pictures of it all over social media like during the construction process. That didn't happen in 1998. Obviously there was no social media. It was, uh, you just kind of, you saw the advertising campaigns that the park put out and that, that was all you got. So the first one that I remember following properly through kind of forums and things like that was Secret Weapon 5, which is Air. 
Um, I remember a, uh, a fan site, a uh, forum called Secret Weapon 5 Live, which I believe went on to become Towers Times, if I remember correctly. Might be wrong. <laughs> it was, it's one of the uh, the two uh, Towers fan sites anyway, either Towers Times or Towers Street. Pretty sure it's Towers Times though. But yeah, that was, um, I remember being on the forum as a, uh, like an excited, like 13, 14 year old as, um, as I watched Secret Weapon 5 unfold. And then of course, getting down there as soon as I could in uh, April, was it April 2002? Like, when, uh, well, so it would have been March 2002 that Air first opened. So, yeah, I just I just remember following it and those low quality, low res digital photos that were all over forums of bits of B and M track appearing in the car park and then discovering that it was going to be uh, the world's first B and M flying coaster. I started getting into the enthusiast community um, when I was at college. Um, started posting on forums. The first friend at college got me into it, started posting on forums and got involved from there, um, like I said that was mid 2000s, so about 2004, 2005 ish, then started going to um, Pleasure Beach guide events in sort of 2006. A lot, for a lot of time, like, I would, uh, people probably know it, I would just, would just go home and away with Wigan Athletic because um, with my dad and that because it was literally just like a day out and kind of like when I was putting everything away from my house but then following on from that one obviously once my dad died that um, kind of like I fell out with football and I was and then I caught, kind of like got drawn back in to being to understanding and learning more about theme parks and it was just an escapism and everything since like I went to PA and then obviously I watched the and Pleasure Beach experience, um, obviously on the PA videos, and I watched that and I was like, right, okay, how can I get involved with this? And then, obviously, we um, do events. So I did with the first ever one was like, Tato Park, I remember sitting on Q Cullen. Like, still not as good as Coaster Express, but... <laughs> um, I remember sitting on Q Cullen and just having fun and meeting like-minded people like Chris and Gemma and it's just like, this is so nice to be surrounded by people who love roller coasters and get on and chat and you just get to meet so many people and that's what then attracted me to, to come into the theme park community as such. In terms of re, like rejoining the like, enthusiast community as, a, as an adult now from um, having an hiatus from being a 13, 14 year old back in the early 2000s. It was probably the uh, the PBE meets. So I think we went to 2018 opening day meet at uh, Pleasure Beach. We've been on along to uh, a few more of the PBE meets since then, the PBE events. Always a, always a really, really good day out with uh, Scott and the rest of the PBE guys. Um, yeah, and it's, uh, I'd, I'd highly recommend those of your uh, kind of wanting to get more involved in the enthusiast community, make some friends who've got similar interests, then th those are fantastic events to go along to. I've always uh, been into theme parks and uh, especially Blackpool as I've been uh, visiting there all my life. Then back in January um, 2006, I was uh, on the internet one night looking through Blackpool Pleasure Beach things and I, I came across the uh, Blackpool Pleasure Beach guide. I had a look on that um, then they uh, signed up to it and they realised they were doing a meet up in March. I went along to that, met, had the fan most fantastic day ever, uh, met so many great people uh, and it's just taken off from there. I've been going to more and more meets year in, year out um, and then uh, meeting more and more people and I've literally, it's got to be over 100 people I've uh, met now and uh, some friends for life and I've been all over Europe, America, and it's just been brilliant, fantastic. From Roller Coaster Tycoon, I found Coaster Force, the forums, um, I think in around 2004. So I've been doing Roller Coaster Tycoon stuff for a good few years before I dove into the internet. Um, but because of this whole like stranger danger, and the internet was quite still quite new at the time, I guess, um, I was really wary of meeting up with people. I was quite aware that I was kind of a 14 year old girl on the internet. 
So it took me four years before I finally met up with my kind of fellow enthusiasts. But over that time, um, through MSN and through the forums themselves, I built up a lot of relationships with people um, all over the world, actually, um, who uh, friendships I made through kind of contact with them, talking about theme parks. But then you end up kind of migrating away from the forums and just end up talking about normal stuff that friends talk about. I'd been knocking around the RCT scene for a little while. I discovered Coast of Force uh, in like 2002. I uh, didn't really take much attention to it at the time, but then it started really warm ramping up uh, come 2005 when I actually got my own computer, my own access to the internet and everything like that. And it started ramping up then and then uh, meeting everyone in 2005. So a long time ago now. Uh, so I'll just simply like, I'll probably about 12, I googled uh, Nemesis just to find out about it, come across Coaster Force, uh, which was my first proper introduction into theme parks and roller coasters. Um, you know, so I joined the forum on there. I think you had to be like 13 and over, but I was, I was 12, you know, breaking the law, you know, you know that's what you do when you're a kid. In 2008, I believe I went to my first ever kind of theme park enthusiast meetup, which was at Adventure Island. Um, and we went there, we had a really fun day out. If anyone fancies scrolling back from my Facebook page, there's some pretty tragic uh, photos of me with ridiculous hair. I mean, my hair's always ridiculous, but it's it's more ridiculous than it, than it is right now. Um, and then from there, I was kind of hooked and I absolutely just dove head first into the theme park thing. I was on a mission to visit every park that I hadn't managed to. I, I think at that point I hadn't been to Flamingo Land. I hadn't been to Oakwood, places like that. So I just started ticking all of those off. Um, and then I went to my first CF Live, uh, which I think was Ghost of Force. It was either Ghost of Force or it was the Flam Flamingo Land Live. Might have been the Flamingo Land and like Water Valley Live um, that year. But I went to that and basically never looked back. I remember the first big um, European trip I did was to Denmark in 2009 with Coast Force. I mean, anyone who was on that trip knows how legendary it was. There are in jokes from that trip that kind of, that we still talk about now, that we still just casually refer to. Um, I was on Coast Force for ages, all throughout me going to uni as well. Um, I was always on Coast Force trips, any trip I could go to. And then obviously as I um, got better jobs and kind of um, got got more money, obviously opened up um, the ability to travel a bit further afield. Um, and I'm lucky that I'm married to someone who enjoys traveling as much as I do. Maybe doesn't enjoy theme parks as much as I do, but definitely enjoys the traveling portion. So, I mean, from, from then on, we've, we've kind of been all over the world. I do still try to go to Coast of Force Lives where I can, but um, for me now in terms of, the fact that I've kind of branched off on my own and done my own trips, um, sometimes it doesn't marry up in terms of um, what what trips are being offered and what I can actually, um, what's, what's on my radar, but I do try to still get back to those meetups because it's always, I mean, there's nothing like meeting up with like-minded people who are obs as obsessed with theme parks as you are. It's, it's always a fun time. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of, of how it happened for me. It's, it's kind of, it's basically just been bred into me, I think, and then the fact that the internet was a thing and the forums, it just kind of allowed these obsession to grow and out of that, some amazing friendships, some amazing trips, and I'm sure many more to, to continue in the future, um, especially once all this, all this nonsense passes and we can get back to the parks. But yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Cheers. A big thanks to everyone that sent in footage for this video. It's really interesting to see how we all got into coasters and the way that we were taken to theme parks when we were younger or went off our own backs and just how we all got into the community it's really interesting to see and it's a nice way of sort of getting to know how everyone got involved with their coaster clubs that the the wave and the coaster groups and youtube channels and stuff like that it, it was it was great to watch all the footage back and big thanks to everyone that sent in footage really really appreciate it please do check out in the description where i've linked back to all of the channels so, uh, Mark, you've joined us now. You've uh, mm -hmm. swapped with Mike, so I apologise if anyone's confused. We've uh, we've not scaled Mike down into Mark. We we just we've got the same bald head though. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. We, we've run out of talcum powder. You see, that's the problem. Look, that's why we got Stuzzy with some hair. Yeah. So we're not quite team bald today. <laughs> but um, is there any memories other than what you've discussed in the video that already that you would like to sort of mention on camera in terms of things that you've really enjoyed whilst being part of the community, really? 
the first day that we had it at Coney Island was yeah. just it was just special that obviously all of us there together and mm. uh, uh, basically when you he was like as a roller coaster enthusiast you're like I need to go on the cyclone yeah, yeah. and then when you're there and it's like we had so much fun and you'll never even watch this video but that guy I literally I'll be telling grandkids about him yeah he literally true. like going around going yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. just like he paid every time he <laughs> paid ten dollars every time to ride it we paid forty eight dollars for a wristband yeah. for the day he was running around quicker than us to re-ride Cyclone for about three hours every time going, yeah. But he was paying ten dollars a time, I'd love to know how much he spent. He must have been rich. He must have won the lottery. He Not about you winning the lottery, <laughs> yeah, he yeah. must have won the lottery he must because have. he must have done it at least ten or fifteen lot. times. Oh yeah. Because we hammered it and he he was hammering it as well. Yeah. And it was funny because we were joining in going, yeah, and it just encouraged him, didn't encouraged it? Him. He seemed to go faster and faster around him. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> running around and it was just an ace day, yeah, weren't it? It set the tone yeah, for that trip. It set, yes. set the tone and one of the things that if you if you think about the roller coaster community, when you all get together it's so much fun. Yes. You know what I mean? And even like even little bits that we all take away, like when we was all in PA at yeah. Christmas. Yeah. It yeah. was just a fun, relaxing and just a laugh, as you probably saw in the video, where it was like me and Stuz were like yeah. basically crying at one point. Yeah. yeah, all because of Q Cullen, basically, <laughs> all because of a roller coaster opinion that we were yeah. just being utterly stupid over, and it yeah. was just funny, it was yeah. just fun. And that's the thing that I take away from the Velvet Coaster. I won't call it a meet-up because it's not a meet-up, but when everyone gets together on opening weekend at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, there is nothing like it. There's no roller coasters involved, there's no rides or anything involved, just everyone mingles in the velvet coaster, yeah. basically a weather spoons, and everyone just gets on yeah. it. Like even people who've fallen out on Twitter or Facebook and YouTube and fell out on coaster forums over the year, everyone gets on. And it's just there's there's a lot of like myths around opening weekend of Blackpool about it being Oh, there's lots of drama. There's lots of fallout. No, it isn't. isn't it's just no, it's isn't. lovely. It is. Yeah. What what sort of made it even better? What was the icing on the cake? Was when everyone met up for log flu at yeah. three o'clock. Yeah. The weather was crap, and everyone went, <laughs> "Yeah, let's all get <laughs> let's together." Anyway. Because that is what the UK <laughs> coaster community is like. Yeah. Everyone comes together, has a good laugh, enjoys, make the best of bad weather. We're British. Let's go on a log flu yeah. in February. It's freezing cold. <laughs> There's a 60 miles per hour wind coming from the south, and everyone's like, "Yeah, let's do a log flume at three o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. just before we're all going on a night out." Yeah, what a great idea! But yeah, it happened. I didn't go on, by the way. So it's a great idea for me. I just watched Mike. <laughs> that, that was the best part. It was good. It was just so so good though that everyone was there and everyone gets involved, and it's it's such a nice feeling when it all yeah. comes together. And you, like I say, we go when you can go around on Velvet Coast, and you can literally just chat to every single person about everything it's just yeah. the ace. Yeah, exactly. And you meet so many new people yeah. as well that people you've never met before. And you end up making friendships. It's just mm -hmm. it's fantastic. Like I said, there's a lot of there was a lot of myths about opening weekend and I think the last two years have probably done a lot to dispel those myths. I think they should be gone now because there is no drama. Everyone just no. gets on. I've certainly not seen it. I mean even when there was supposedly drama I didn't see any so right. and we uh, we virtually take over the uh, first floor of the Velvet Course. Oh it's so it's good. like the cost community and everybody, uh, the rest of the public, go uh, on the ground floor, don't they? Yeah, because they all so, realise uh, quite quickly that everyone knows each other, and anyone that's up there is not going to confuse I'm off. <laughs> yeah, there's no uh, at least over 100 people, at least. Pulling least. tables yeah. apart, putting them together, confusing all the waiters who that's right, bring yeah. the food. You go, yeah. table 65, yeah, it's um, in Northwich, mate, because it's been moved <laughs> yes. that far, so it's just one of those things where it's just so much fun. but. Any other memories before we, we start filming this? Is there anything else that you want to talk about that sticks in your mind? Because I've got one for me, which was when we were at Cedar Point last year, yeah. seeing like yourself and Stephen mm. on Top Thrill Dragster, yeah, was, having I been like friends was, with you yeah. for nearly yeah. like 15 years, yeah. and knowing how much you two wanted to do that coaster, mm -hmm. and then seeing you together at the front row, I was like, yeah. that's it, I'm happy, this trip is a success for me. And yeah. It was the reactions that you all had coming off. Because I sat out the first ride on it so I could film everyone's reaction who was not been on it before and for me that was a massive highlight seeing the reactions because i love that coaster anyway it's just incredible incredible it is. coaster one of my uh, all-time favorites now yeah yeah so any more memories um well just 
continuously meeting new people. Yeah. I've got to say that. Um, you know, I've, I wouldn't like to think how many I've met over the years uh, doing the um, these meets since 2006, now into our 14th season now. Uh, and it's 100, 200. for me it yeah, was. Yeah, um, you've been even longer with you. With yeah, Coastal Falls 2005. Blackpool yeah, Pleasure so Beach. I've, uh, I've met a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, friend, good friends. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, I think that sums it up. So, uh, thanks to Mike, who's currently stood behind the camera. Thanks to Mark, Stuz, and everyone else who's helped me out with this video project. Let us know in the comments how you got involved with roller coasters. What made you want to go to theme parks? What made you like theme parks? What was your first big credit? And of course, if you are involved with the coaster community, let us know in the comments how you got involved. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next Pleasure Beach Experience video.